the living room not far from here, a friend of mine asked me if I could only give a single piece of advice to your kid, what it would be. I said, never underestimate change. Or at least not like me, who stood in line for hours to buy the Star Wars VHS collector set on the first day. A few years later, I did it again, to buy the future-proof DVD version. And when the Blu-ray came available, I gave up. Probably most of you think that this guy is nuts, because you also think that we are good at change, not just in foreseeing, but managing it. Unfortunately, I beg to differ. Systematically, we do underestimate change. Take global warming. We are pretty good at managing the increasing temperature, aren't we? It's just a pity polar bears may not last long enough to see how good we are. We did great to deal with the Great Depression, just as we did with the Black Monday, the Russian crisis, the internet bubble, or the last global recession. And we still believe it's just a coincidence each crisis was bigger than the previous one. What about water? According to WHO, 3.4 million people die each year because they lack access to clean water and sanitation. Most of them are children. This means every 17 seconds, a child dies. And scientists determined that nearly 5 billion people will suffer from lack of access to clean water by 2050. How is this possible if we are so good at change? Well, humans have lived for a local and linear world for the last 150,000 years. Nothing really changed for generations, and even if something did, its slow pace made it almost undetectable for years. Everything was pretty much the same for a long time. We used the same tools, ate the same food, and pretty much lived in the same place. It was a local environment. Things that affected you were within a day's walk. Then the shift started in the 18th century, and we spent the last 100 years under the spell of speed and accelerating change. In 1903, the Wright brothers managed to fly for 279 meters. In 1927, Charles Lindbergh flew from New York to Paris. In 1969, only 67 years after the flight of the Wright brothers, Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon. How crazy is that? The rate of adoption of new technologies is accelerating at a dizzying speed. It took nearly 75 years for the telephone to connect 50 million people. Radio needed 38. Television only 13 years to do that. The internet did that in four years. An angry bird space? In 35 days. <laughs> people are living longer, and more and more people share this planet. The global average lifespan doubled, while the human population increased sixfold in the last 200 years. How did we do it? Well, preventing chronic diseases better, transplanting organs, making test tube babies, and of course, vaccination. Today, we are living in an exponential and global world. Something happens in China, whatever it might be, it affects you in Budapest literally minutes later. Of course, for some of us, this accelerating speed of change could be frightening, but we have to accept our exponentially approaching future. If you ask me, this is your map. If you want to know where change is coming from, concentrate on these four areas, which are interconnected through information, AI and robotics, nanotech, biotech, and digital manufacturing. Nanotech has become a major industry. Products containing nanomaterial are widely valuable in coatings, computers, clothes, cosmetics, and medical devices. Smaller, lighter, faster, and cheaper devices can do more and cleverer things. Just one example, medical nanobots, like the planned artificial red blood cells, can emulate the function of their organic counterparts with 200 times the efficiency. Thanks to these devices, a person can survive a heart attack for hours, so he can seek medical help or sprint at top speed for at least 15 minutes without taking a breath. Technology has improved our life. We accept it. It is in everything and everywhere. Right now, biotech is merging life sciences and tech to take us to a whole new level. We started altering life itself. Brain-computer interface holds the promise to make the blind see, the deaf hear, and the physical impaired to return to normal mobility. And there's so much more, like personalized medicines to heal cancer, 
printing new organs, not to mention genetic modification. Robots are getting smarter and cheaper. In 2011, IBM's Watson computer system won against the world champions on the US television show Jeopardy. Soon AI will learn enough to run air traffic control or medical diagnostics. All our gadgets, from phones to cars, will embody it. The robotic workflow is revolutionizing manufacturing. And AI hub systems will transform the service industry, medicine, and everything we know about security. Manufacturing is also going digital, thanks to clever design software, new materials, robots, and new processes, such as 3D printing. Hearing gates and high-tech parts of military jets are already being printed. And you can see quite a lot of other examples on my list. In time, these amazing machines may be able to make almost anything, anywhere. Of course, the factor of the future will be different from what we are used to. Some even say that it will have only two employees, a man and a dog. A man will be there to feed the dog, while the dog will be there to keep the man from touching the equipment. <laughs> One thing for sure, we don't have a luxury of Patul Palu, a famous character of Hungarian literature who put things off all the time. His motto is, oh, we have plenty of time to do that. But actually, we don't. Thank you.